bottom of the, um, this is at the bottom of the retention pond. Yeah. You have the small orifice, which slowly drains, fills up to a certain level. Maybe in a 10, I think it's like a 10 or a 25 year storm, it'll fill up this level. And at a 100 year storm, it fills up close to the top. But it doesn't get within six inches, so it doesn't go over the emergency spillway. But these multiple orifices allow it to flow out at the same rate as the pre development conditions. So it's just. So it just as it fills up, it's just slowly draining. It, exactly. it never really sits with water. Yeah, it's like if you took this, if you had a faucet pouring into it and punched a hole yeah. coming out. That's the basically how it works, like how the uh, detention pond would work. The detention pond fills up with water. This outlet structure is modeled to allow a flow rate at a certain certain rate modeled after the pre-development conditions. And that's in the stormwater report. I'm sure Sarah's gonna go, you know, dig into that. So You're just trying to match the normal storm in 10 year, 25. Yeah. For a hundred year storm is Happens a lot. Time. <laughs> you got a lot of flow to take care of. So. Okay, I guess we gotta for that part of it. Questions on the uh, NOI and the change of ownership and all that. Okay, so I will do my best to answer those questions. Ward wasn't here today. He did the NOI, but I can answer Ward. Why don't you have Ward's yeah. um, I could probably answer the questions about uh, regarding any wetlands information. Um, well, it depends on what your question is going to be. Yeah, it's your question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, of course, we can't sign off on anything anyways right now. Yeah. But there's uh, something from, uh, appears to be the you know, town attorney or, or consultant that talks about it has to be refiled under change of name. And yeah. My attorney. Do you get that? I can give you a copy of the letter. The Tuesday, the 25th day or something, I think. It yep, was. and they came to an agreement. Uh, I can give it to you. It basically says, as permits are being issued at that time, uh, change of ownership names will be taking place. And that was an agreement between my lawyer and uh, what was the cost of it? Cost of it, yeah. yeah. So this is, is that the newest? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a response to that. This one? I don't think this one. Unless it just came this afternoon or something. Okay, I, that's all I had was this one here. Of the Mr. Costa's concern. Costa's right. And, and this is right, the my attorney and Mr. Costa. So that was sent to here to the office as it then. I would guess. I think the uh, number of people were CC. Yes, yeah. I mean. Barrett, yeah. Okay. So that would be. We're gonna continue anything. These two sheets. This is the separate system. How much are you? Oh, you're saying from existing grade? From existing, how much is this? Okay, so at the worst spot, it's about uh, one half feet. Now we in the back corner. Um, yeah, here it's about two and a half, and it's about one and a half, and very little up front. But on average, it's about one and a half, two feet. So it's a little bit higher. 
coming up here, as you get towards the back, so you have this 94 contour. It's you know roughly 98 in this opening oh, open space area. Um, but you know we're talking a couple feet of elevation change. It's pretty close in here. You see the 97 contour. It's about 98 through here. So it's um, you know, on average, it, the site is coming up a little bit, but towards the front, it's pretty close to the existing grade. Towards the back, it drops off to that wetland. But there's not much back here, just the, the wetlands. So it's not like you're going to have a big mound in front of somebody's house or something. So. And yeah, this is be the septic system. Before the planning board, and they pretty much signed off on everything, waiting for the peer review. And I mean, they didn't. Yeah, like was seven, I think there's another planning board. And yeah. I think there was, from what I heard, there's some discussion that the conservation commission might be willing to meet with them. Well, that's what. I, yeah, that's what I was that wondering. Thing. Yeah. That that's what I have some notes here about August seventh. But as far as permits and everything, we were in line. It's just that they wanted to have the peer review and have, you know, an expert review some of the material. But yeah. Besides that, they were, you know, okay with everything, because we do. Have you, you been know. in contact with uh, Sarah Campbell at all? Or? We have. I mean, is, is she, is she going to be uh, done with the review, do you, you know? Oh, uh, I, I had a phone call conversation with her. From what she said, it shouldn't be a problem getting that done that day. I think, yeah. I'm not sure how the, System works with, I like guess she's being actually hired by the town. She's not working for me, so she has to get approval from the town to go ahead and do it. But my conversation with her, she felt comfortable that she could, once she got the approval, that she was the person selected by the town, that she could get it done on the other side. See, we will answer any questions Sarah has going into this right. lesson, but we don't. She's really working for you, not. Yeah, for us. And I would, I don't want to uh, step on any toes. She, you know, she's really over here. Right, but I know she called you about, you know, questions or... A any questions yeah. that she has, we will have to more yeah. discuss with her. And by August 7th, if she has any questions, we'll resolve them. And I would do it the same way with a, you know, memo addressed to everybody and go through each comment, so... Make it the uh, seventh or any idea? Barring any catastrophes on the we should be able to do She was talking about setting up for like six o'clock for us. So. Yeah, it was that Tuesday or something? Uh, yeah, I think it's a is it a Tuesday? Yes. Tuesday or Monday for us. Yeah. 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 I also have all the uh, the setbacks on there as well for you know, septic and if you look, it's a pretty tight site, but I think it uh, it fits well with you know what we can do with the site. You never really have a commercial development there. The soils are you know poor soils. So you're not going to have a large. You're not going to be able to have a large septic system design. Where this you know it, you're occupying the space and generating some tax revenue, but it's, it doesn't have a big utility demand. And you know, I think that it fits nicely with what we can do for the site. Yeah. Yeah, 
was just what she was setting up for August 7th. She gave me this, so. Let's see what happens. And I guess we'll just, uh, yeah, we'll just continue. It looks like it, they're going to try to do it for August 7th. Yeah, and I know it's contingent on, you know, her comments, but if anybody could make it, I could send you the comments with, you know, my. I'm, I'm sure she'll. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. All that to us as well. All right. Oh yeah. You guys have any other questions, sir? No. That's the the newest set, and we keep those there. Yes. Yeah. And well, I'll exchange information with you guys. Um, all right. I, I can. I'm sure, I can get that. I can send you PDF copies, or uh, if you want a disc or anything, I'd be happy to drop it off. Probably so. gonna talk to Priscilla, see how she can Yeah, do I'll, I'll, I'll bring a disc back for Hey, once, once, not, not this one, but on the final one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, I'm sure we're going to have more changes after. Right, so we so, don't need all the extra. They're usually minor. I mean, I've, I've done peer review, I've conducted it and done, been on the other end of peer review. And, you know, there's, a, there's always a few comments, but. Um, they gotta justify their their salary somehow. It's like the gotta so justify. Your we'll, just, we'll just continue this to the uh, okay to August seven, and it looks like we'll, we're gonna try to probably start for like six o'clock or something. Get it, you know, sure. prior to their their meeting. Or, okay. And if there's any changes, we'll I'll let you know. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Well, we have a question. No question. I have from DEP to fill that. Um, as long as it's not, if it's an isolated wetlands, less than 5,000 square feet, you don't have to do uh, compensatory storage. Uh, so you will just, we have permission from DEP to fill that wetland. So. Also in that little isolated wetland area, keep in mind there's concrete slabs, black top. Yeah, there's some car parts. <laughs> All kinds of junk. In there. Yeah, it's been used as a disposal area. So that's gonna have to be all dug up and cleared out of there. Well, you're gonna have to take out the concrete slab sidewalks and the old blacktop and the metal parts that are in there. That to be removed. So that's gonna get all removed. And then yeah, removed, taken out, and built. You wouldn't wanna, because that's part of the the roadway. You wouldn't want to build over that. It, it was, typically it was a low area that was just used to throw stuff into it. That's <laughs> what they did back in the day. And that was the idea to have those bioretention areas in the front. It's kind of mimics the storage that you have for that little wetland area. And if you look at the drainage calcs, it's like better than 50% for all the storm events. But 
you're going to have a landscaped rain garden that stores some water instead of this low point wetland, uh, isolated wetland that's just kind of filled with a bunch of garbage now. So um, that's why we put those rain gardens in front. Aesthetically more appealing. Yeah. Dump site. That's what, was, what they would look like generally. Well, the second question I have is the plan there is a uh, bio detention area. And it has a spillway in it. Now, if you want to gather gather rainwater runoff, why would you have a spillway? So you're talking about the curb inlet right here. So, Tension area. yeah, there's so, spillway, but there's none here. okay, so, so what's that all what we wanted to do, in the pre-development conditions, all the water flows this way, so we had to mimic that. So this bioretention area, if you look at the drainage, okay, you have the top of this, the top of these rain gardens is at 98 by the bioretention. Inside of it, you have a mixture of different soils that goes all the way down, I think, to 95.5, where there's stone, and at the bottom, at 95.5, oh, 95, I'm sorry. So at 95, you have this perforated underdrain that captures all the water, all right? But the rain garden will fill up. So you have stone, then you have a potting mix, and if it fills up to 98, it'll flow into the top of this outlet structure. But these underdrain, under drains capture all this water and it pipes it over here, okay? These are designed to fill up to 98. And once they fill up to 98, that's when it spills over into the spillway. But you still have three feet of water storage underground. Okay. And that's designed to infiltrate. Well then the spillway goes where? The spillway goes just out there's a little narrow strip between these two properties, but this is actually, so if you look at the grading here, this is actually cut through here. So it's designed to be a flat channel, almost like a swale, and eventually the water would make its way this way. But still, in the pre-development conditions, this isolated wetlands would fill up and just spill over into here, and there's never really been any flooding. Because we cut here, this is going to be a narrow channel that's a couple feet deep and it'll flow all the way to this wetland. But we have more storage with these two. I think it's, I don't know off the top of my head, it's not quite 100%, but it's about 75% more storage than this isolated wetland. So it's really improving on the drainage conditions and you have the swale that comes over. So you're also putting more buildings up too, so you got, but, more, you got more roof area than what's there now. True, true. But all the impervious goes this way. So this uh, drainage area, it's just pervious material. We're here, it's pervious pavers. So yeah, there is impervious, but all the impervious is being directed this way. It's only this area that's being directed into these isolated wetlands. And that's in the, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, in, into the uh, bioretention where the old isolated wetland was. So since we're talking about pitch, so that's my other question. Why is it all pitched to the back towards the wetlands? Why isn't it pitched the other way and having towards the front? towards the front or, or half and half or whatever? Why well, is it all pitched to the back? When you try it's already to, wet back there as it is, and now it's going to be. Well, when you do the grading and you do the drainage, you try to model the pre development conditions after the post or the post development conditions after the pre development conditions. So you want it to, you want the site to drain the same way that it would before there was buildings on it. If you look, everything slopes to the back this way. All right, there's only a very little area here in the existing conditions 
that flows out this way. So what we did is we kept this flat. If we push the water this way, if we push water towards the front, it wouldn't match and you'd be violating the stormwater management standards. So you wanna make sure that the amount of water that's here for post development after the buildings are done is the same as it would be before. So that's why we slope everything to the back because that's what it's doing before the proposed conditions. So in the existing conditions, everything's flowing to the back. Okay, and that's what these were, that's how these outlet structures are modeled. It's like, essentially think of this as like a bathtub with, you know, a couple of drains in it. We have to model those drains so it flows, you know, at an even pace and you're not just, you know, turning on a faucet and letting it flood a wetland or flood your neighbor. So, so if that's the case, you're sloping to the back. Then why are you sloping to the back and run water? into your leach field, then your leach field should be up here. Um, How would you be having water going that way? So the leach field, well, we're not actually... Make any sense. The leach field is back here. Yeah, the so leach field is leach back field. there. But we also, we couldn't park in the front. The water table is too high in the front. In the back, it was better. We were able to get a park test back there. We had type C soils and it was only down, the water table was only down maybe a foot and a half in the front. Um, the water's not necessarily, it's not pitched towards the uh, leach field. We don't have water that's actually flowing this way. The drainage system is flowing to this detention pond, but the detention pond is more than 50 feet away from the septic system, which is the setback that you see here. Well, if you've got the roadway in between the buildings, it would have to be sloped that way. So the water would have to go that way. The water's, it, it's actually, this is more or less flat. It's not sloping towards the leach field. You've got catch basins collecting There's catch there. basins that are collecting it, and the catch basins are discharging into the detention. So this is more or less flat through here. And the septic system is designed for four foot separation to the estimated high water table anyway. Exactly. So we needed to have it built so up. A, that's a state requirement. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the next question is, what's the grade of the property now, and how much are you going to raise this? Yeah, I answered that earlier. You probably didn't hear him. Yeah, it was. Um, so towards the front, it's not very much at all. At the worst point is in this back left corner here. It's about four feet. It's about, here there's actually some cut, but it's about one and a half, two feet here. And it gets a little bit higher towards the back, but that's actually away from the neighboring property. But there is fill in the back, but we needed to have fill for the septic system to work. We needed that four foot separation. The water table is only down 30 inches. So we needed at least, I mean, you know, another foot and a half to the bottom of the system. And then you have your stone, keystone, pipe. So, you know, you're talking a few feet of fill. We need at least three or four feet of fill for the septic system to work. So you would have had a mounded system. What, what, it's not a mounded system. Well, it is a mounted system, but the way that the, the rain works, it just it goes flat right with the... Uh, It'll blend in with the existing... Uh, and we needed to have a little bit of fill here to have the detention system. Work. But we figured if we're going to have fill, let's put it in the back where nobody can see it. Yeah, I think the concerns are that you know, you're raising a lot. Yeah, while well, you're, you're raising the water, water and also much. discharging it potentially onto neighboring properties. It, it is adding more water to the water. Well, well that's what this is all about. Concerns. Yeah. So I, I understand, you know, you think impervious surface, <clears throat> you know, you're basically paving over this, but with the uh, porous pavers, we have this infiltration system here that's oversized by, it's uh, like another 15% of the minimum requirement. But the detention system, allow, and we have the two outlet structures, it actually, for every storm event, is an improvement over the pre-development conditions, so you're not gonna have any flooding. And I'm sure Sarah's gonna 
you know, dive into that. That's what, you know, she's there for, but that's what yeah. this addresses. So the next question is about these forced papers. <laughs> I guess the thing about them is, the question is, is who lays them, what the spacing is, and if they're put in right. And second of all, after they're in there in time, they become compacted. So they may take water in the beginning, but like anything, after you ride over it a while, yeah, it becomes compacted. So then. The well, I know Mike Stotes is doing the construction, and I know that the porous pavers they've gone a long way from what they originally, uh, what they originally were. So they're guaranteed for 25 years, and I mean I know that they're supposed to work the way they are put in. Now, this ensures that they keep operating the way that they are when they're first put in. So, you know, maintenance, upkeep, inspections. So somebody's going to go check on that to make sure that we're Yeah, right. and DEP can actually request this, these logs, for up to three years. We covered that in some of the comments that they have to keep a logbook of what they're It's required. So. And it can be requested by DEP and the condom. Mm -hmm. And I think the installation part of it, whether they're installed according to the specification or not, that'll be the responsibility of not only the general contractor, but construction control people. Yeah. Um, I can just design. It's like anything. I can't, it's like a steel beam. I mean, it right. <laughs> it's going to be installed right. Well, someone's going to inspect it to make sure it's installed yeah. right. Looks like you got a few more. <laughs> so the next question is, uh, after you get these in, someday somebody shows up with a paper and it gets paid. Then what? It comes blacktop. Well, that's a whole other permitting process that they'd have to go through and clear with everybody else. They just stuff. couldn't show up and pay yeah. and do it, and that'd be over with. That's not something that we can regulate theoretically. I mean, anybody could pay anywhere at any point in time without a permit. It's a matter of being caught or not, you know? Yeah, you'd be violating the tax <coughs> regulations because you'd be going over the 60% allowable and pervious. So you'd run into a whole ish, bunch of issues there as well. You wouldn't be, you're supposed to be under the 60% impervious cover for the entire lot. Right. You use the porous pavers because it's a pervious service. Right. But if you pave over that, you're going to be in trouble with a lot of people, potentially. Yeah, so. is anybody going to make you take it up? I doubt it. Well, that's another issue. You've got to deal with it. There's nothing we can yeah, do. Yeah, not right here. Yeah. Well, that's a question I have, and that's, that's why I'm here. Unfortunately, that would fall probably under DEP or whatever reporting agency that they would have to deal with yeah. when that bridge would be crossed. Okay, so now on this plan, and I brought this up before, I don't see and I want to know where, that we got snow removal. I want to know where the snow, from the driveways to the roads, you're going to have a metal building on taking it. So the snow is going to come off the roof, and you're going to have to, you're going to have to have a loader because you're going to have to clear all that out of there. So where are you putting it? So, between the septic area, so we have a septic area and we have a reserve septic area. This is really just the septic area over here. That's the only area that's gonna be utilized. Technically, you could drive a vehicle on it, but we have this whole area right here that could use, be used for storm removal. I mean, that's still, you know, it's a pretty good portion of the site. If you're mounting snow, it's gonna be adequate for snow removal. So you don't mind piling snow on top of a septic leach field? Well, ideally you wouldn't want to do it on the the leach field that's being used, but this is just a reserve area. There's nothing there right now. This is in case this system fails, then we have this area to put the second system. So how big is this area? Um, plenty big enough to take small so I mean you don't know how much small each winter, but if you start having some like we had a few years ago, you're <laughs> um, gonna have I think that would probably revert back to the building owner. I mean, if he ends up with so much snow that, like, you have to remove it, you'll have to remove it. Yeah, you're about. talking about an area that's almost 4,000 square feet for just snow removal. Well, it's just like any place. Parking lots, everybody removes it. You know, you'll have to. I know, but if you run an area there and start dumping over here, fill this in, then in the spring, this is going to go over. 
Yeah, you're not down the ravine. Yeah. This is the old river. This is all sloped this way. Mm -hmm. And the brook down here, which I got pictures of with my other questions. And then it's going to fill that brook that's already overflowing and come around our property. Well, you're saying if the snow melted, if you fill this with snow, this. all the snow melted, this is full. The water is going to run out of this retention area because it's be full of snow. So it's going to run down this way. This, this is sloped all this way. Mm -hmm. I walked out in there the other day. The old railroad bed is sloped that way. It keeps getting deeper as it goes north. So the water is going to come down this way to the brook eventually. So Anything that escapes here is going to come down in here to the brook right here. Okay. No, I understand Here's what you're saying. Here's the brook. I drew a yellow line. Here's the yep. brook. Here's the property you're talking about. Mm -hmm. the river. So it's all going to go this way to the brook. Go to the north of that brook. Okay. No, I understand what you're saying, but that's why we have the outlet structures and the detention basin. Now, this is modeled to attenuate the 100 year storm, a storm that happens once every 100 years or has a 1% chance of happening. We're talking about seven inches of rainwater within a period of hours, all right? Even if this was filled with snow, it's not gonna match the flow rate of the 100 year storm. So this is, you know, this is size to attenuate like a hurricane type situation. So the snow melt, these structures are modeled for all those different storm events. And I even went a step higher to check just for fun, check for the 500 year storm, and it still works. So, you know, it's a very, it, I know it doesn't seem like it, but for a snow melt type situation, it's not going to, it's not going to flood because you know, it's, it's filled up with snow. I mean, this thing would be filled up with water. It still doesn't. Right. You would have to have. Snow is a lot denser. Than it was in the winter, and that was frozen, then would have to run off. If you've got two, three inch rainstorm, it'd run off. Of it. it would never freeze, though, because it's designed to drain entirely. You're never going to have a situation where it's going to be a giant pond filled with ice. It's always designed to drain. It's designed to drain within 24 hours. So. But think about a 70 year storm in snow at 8 inches per, per, you get 8 inches of snow for 1 inch of rain. Okay, if it's a 100 year storm, it's a 7 inch rainstorm. That's what? 63 inches of snow in one storm and it'd have to all melt within 24 hours? Snow melts are gradual. They're not like a seven, like a like a I think what he's seven inch is, rainstorm. Probably, I think what he's concerned is, is say they plow a bunch of crap in there, you're going to get dirt, grass, and everything else in there, and then it starts mounting clogs everything up in there. I think relatively that spills off down <coughs> to that brook. But even if that was filled with water, is what I'm saying, it, it's not going. I to I think that would be flood. obviously a negligent situation if you know yeah. they're they're damaging the collection basin by filling it full of crap, then obviously that's going to be another issue. And that's, that's addressed in here. So, inspection schedule for the sediment four bay, detention basin, clean debris. It's like you inspect the sediment four bay three, twice a year. So it has all the instructions for that. So, yeah, it's up to the owner to remove the garbage from that and make sure that the outlet structures are working properly. So. I mean, it's even it like makes sense to me. I mean, it's, it's, al uh, it's almost like your catch basins the town has. Periodically, you better clean them out. They're going to get set in there, and they have to be cleaned out. If you don't, you know, right. you take care of your storm water. Right. So, I mean, it's a maintenance item. I look at his place down in Hazard, and there's no problems. <laughs> I don't see any problem. Like I say, we're getting it reviewed by Sarah just to, yeah, because. We can't. Yes, go, we can. can't go through yes, all this. <laughs> I don't think anybody goes through it. Other, she I might skip. To. Don't tell me nobody. Uh, you, have it, have you have it on the computer. I know. <laughs> no, I'm old school. I'm too old for that. Yeah. I did. We're not. Yeah. 
So I just got these couple pictures I want to show you. Sure. This is the brook. This is the brook. This is on June 6, two inches. Mm -hmm. That's crossing the road. The build up around here between the railroad across the street and uh, what's been going on at the butterfly place and the stone guy. Nobody, nobody does nothing about this brook, about getting it cleaned. See, a lot of that everything just that's gets, causing that problem everything didn't gets, have stormwater management control or anything. Uh, what the railroad is doing over there, I have no idea what's going on over there, but they're well, exempt from they, everything. They've sloped no that. They put them. a big berm on the road, and they sloped that so that whole driveway goes back down to this ditch, the brook that I'm showing you. And because of the railroad, about. they don't have to comply with any of this. They're the ones Why that are not? causing the problem. I don't know. It's federal. It's, no one says anything to the railroad. And that's the uh, same brook that's behind by uh, the propane place, just old Greg's. That was on two inches. That's pretty full to its banks. That's off the bridge? That's yeah. off the block. That's the rail line. That's off the bridge. That was July, uh, June 6th, two inches. This is on North Main Street, just before you go around the bend to come out the Route 5. That's the field there. That's the same same brook. There's a better picture. Can you try contacting the EP or anything about the road? It was my own, and it will dig it out. You can't go on anybody else's property. Well, all I can say is I mean, years I mean, ago, that's, the town... That has nothing to do with this. Yeah. And well, I'm just saying, if any more water escapes from this property, this is all going to get worse. But water is escaping from the property now in the existing conditions. The proposed conditions are actually better for flow rate, for volume of runoff. So, you know, it's modeled to either be the same, for uh, Massachusetts stormwater standard, for management standards, the proposed conditions either have to match or be better than the existing conditions. And we're better for every storm event. So there's less runoff under the proposed conditions because of you know the way that we did the drainage and the infiltration and modeling the outlet structures. So there's been three on that. Okay. okay. I got one more thing, one more question. Why is the building and the septic system I thought it was supposed to be 100 feet from the wet land buffer and the building is. This is the 100 foot buffer. The so building why is that over and this over? Why isn't this back? Is okay. Back from up and up and <clears throat> the buffer. So it's actually the 50 foot. All right. So for that's what we're more concerned with the 50 foot buffer and no build within the 50 foot buffer. And for the 25 foot buffer, you can't have any. Um, can't have any grading. So, so the septic can be within the 50 foot buffer. So how far are you coming away from the back property line? You say you're not so this is the back. 25 feet from where? No, this is the property line here. So we have grading to the property line, but the 25 foot wetland buffer can't have grading within that 25 foot buffer. The septic has to be outside of the 50 foot buffer. So if you look, it's within the 100 foot buffer, but. Oh, where's the railroad bed back in here? The railroad bed is right here. This one? Yes. So this is this is the wetland line oh, right here. Yep. And this is the top of the bank here? Yes. So if you look, yep, right there. That's the top of the bank. So it slopes down, you have a little flat area, and then it slopes down to the ravine. So. This line represents the edge of the ravine. This is 25 foot buffer where you can't do anything. And this is the 50 foot buffer, which we're outside of.
continue? Second. Aye. Okay. That's the only thing that's changed. It's that delineation. Yeah, but it is the exact same plan. Otherwise, you got you got replacing the drainage and putting in riprap. Everything's right. on this one. Oh, that was in case we. Did. That's that's proposed. That was proposals. Here we go. So who has these plans? The planning board and. Planning board, you at this point. Do they have the new revision? Those particular ones, no. So you're going to have to reference to this, I suppose. Um, those the are only planning board. Planning board has not received this newest version with this in there until the August 7th meeting. Right. Most of it was popular. 
and they're just continuing to fall over, jeopardize the building. So insurance reasons, we also have to remove those. Um, what was going to be cleared is what's cleared now when it comes to what's around the property for the building. And then we're going to replant some of the trees with something that's a harder wood, like sugar maple or something of that nature, versus the poplar tree, which will cause issues in the future. So the plan for the site is essentially uh, some interior renovations to the building. This is going to be a um, uh, RV and trailer um, renovation yep. business. Um, we've already gotten a uh, special permit from the zoning board. Uh, we've got site plan approval from the planning board pending your determination on the conservation issues. Yep. Um, the business is in operation presently and already has a uh, permit to operate through Dick. But there's no exterior work going there's on. There's no exterior at this point. The existing um, grass parking lot is going to stay that way. There's, there's virtually there's no um, change to the you know to the surface of the of the way the concrete pad that's going to be removed and replaced with one that's actually smaller so the the pervious area of the lot isn't, isn't really going to be affected at all. There is an existing drain area drain that's shown that uh, the pipe that goes out and we had talked about with engineering about different ways to deal with that outfall from the drain. Um, and part of in front of the building um, you have some existing asphalt as I spoke with you earlier when you visited the site uh, we'll be doing some patches or some holes in it and uh, clean that up in the future otherwise you have the gravel area um, through the years grass has grown up through it Otherwise, we're adding more gravel in front of the building. Um, you can see on the plan, right about where towards the center line of the front, next to the five and ten. You see that like a little island there. And well, then back further towards the building, you'll see another island where the septic system is to be placed. If you draw it into uh, pretend there's a line going across there. That's to the to your right would be great gravel that would be in there, superbious. Um, gravel to the left of that stays grass as it is now and maintained. Um, so the dumpster is to the right of that building. We have to put a pad um, so we can move the dumpster and such for them to access it and get in there with the trucks so there will be a little bit of gravel over there as needed. Otherwise around the building, um, you saw today when you were there, there's chips that they put down um, there's just going to be storage behind that uh, stockade fence, which is depicted um, to the left of the building. You see a little orange line, little triangles. That's the stockade fence. Um, the idea is you don't see the vehicles from the road. You can see there's four depicted spots for trailers to be parked. Along that uh, existing top of bank, you see another orange line with the little X's. Uh, that would be a uh, proposed chain link fence for security. Um, the chief had some concerns about transients getting in there around the building because it's behind a fence. Um, so to limit that, uh, we're planning on putting in a security fence of uh, six foot tall. There is going to be a security camera on that side, but that's not going to stop somebody from hiding back there. And then where you see there's kind of that blank area between the parking area and that fence that kind of makes that little triangle there. That's where we plan on putting additional trees to hopefully get some shade back on the building at some point once they mature. So our questions are what questions do you have for us? Yeah. Okay, my main concern is these other plans. Yeah, okay. that's the that's the, the whole thing because you, you're you're saying this is this is probably the way it's going to be. Well, uh, you know, it's it's okay, what it, this is, this includes more grading and digging and if if we need to replace the drain, if we need to do something with this existing drain that's in the parking lot, that you'd be correct. That, that you'd be correct, but. But it's going to be your determination, I guess, what, what we need to do to address that existing situation. It was a concern that was brought up 
We know that the drain works because we've been out there in the rain. We know that it's not clogged. Um, it, we're not sure whether, the, and we don't want to obviously do, need to do a stormwater study because of the amount of, that's being disturbed. So, you know, it's questionable whether the drain is even really necessary, whether we just plug it up and there'd be enough natural runoff from the site that, it, that the water would be controlled. But we really, but it is there, and, and what happens to what goes out the other end of it, I guess, is something that you will need to help, help when you, us decide. When uh, you visited the site, I don't know if the two of you, the other two of you, had a chance to stop there today, but um, I, when he did arrive there, um, as I explained, when we've been there, when there's been really bad torrential downpour, the majority of the water going to this drain is coming from the property of the north. His, he has a drain as well on his property, but the, the road in front of the building is sloped. So the majority of it is all coming from his property. If I was to take out the drain, I can regrade a little bit where that uh, pre-existing asphalt is and a little bit towards the building and that would retain the water on his own property if I was to have to deal that. Unless he's willing to split the cost of any modifications we would need to do. But we would like to leave it just as it is. It's been there for multiple years, over 20 years. One of the things that we discovered that's kind of interesting is we can't find that this site was ever reviewed by the ComCom when sure the building was. was it? Yes, it was. Were there, were there determinations made at that time? We didn't have access I to that at the ComCom. I reviewed that when they built that building. And that's actually where my next question is I would like to look at that stuff. And we, I'm pretty sure that site was not allowed to be septic. Well, Bill Ceruta, um, I thought you were saying here, he's the one who did the perk test in 03 and designated where the septic would go, and uh, Dick, uh, the building inspector, has already approved the plans of where it's at. We are limited, however, where the water well would need to be, and that's unfortunately, it's in an approximate location on here, is that uh, to your top left there, big W there. Um, that's pretty much the only spot you can put the well according to Bill Ceruta's uh, determination. The request is on this set plans. Request yeah. before us is for this plan that's in front of you right now. That what's the? I mean, I'm, I'm just. I'm. Let me see. I, I'm not quite sure what you mean by the difference between the two plans. I think what they have. Is you got. You got the alternatives to the drain modifications. So this is the same plan. Okay. This is a proposed. Um, Right, right. But that's what I'm saying is if we got these different which plans. Which are we going to act on? Which, which, yeah, which, which you know, that's, that's kind of your one here. You know. we, yeah, so what we have is two different styles of drains. Um, one's the oil and water separator. I was hoping Bill's son would be still here. I don't know if he stepped out and is coming back in. I asked him to stay. Um, the other one was kind of like they described as like a toilet bowl. So it catches stuff and the rain comes in and just washes out, which is not so great of an idea. So we're leaning towards the oil and water separator if we had to. Now this one's talking about permanent pavement. You said that you didn't have anything there. No, I don't have no permanent pavement. pavement. I have yeah, but it's, they're talking about it on the plans. That's, uh, what I'm that's not what I was aware of. That's not yeah. what's in the plan for me. But that's not, there's no pavement there. That's grass. Well, I know that, but that's not what the plans say. I understand. Say. I don't know how that got in there. We didn't realize that. Well, that's that's the that, thing. That, that's, that's that makes what the confusion what we're talking about. Yeah, and I can't say, you know, we'll say this, but has everybody else been going by this? That's the whole thing. The other yeah, plan they, in Everybody, it. whether it's ZBA planning, is all in the same assumption that I am, the owner, is that will be still the gravel surface with the exception of the pre-existing pavement area. And of course, the change of concrete space. Like like I said, that half would be all pervious gravel. It's cost effective for us because we're trying to get in and we're trying to keep costs down. But we don't want a mud pit out there either. Well, I don't know. There's something on that plan that refers to soft pack pavement and it's pointing at an area that's grass. So I don't know why it says that on the plan. That's that can be a mistake by the person who created that. But that is not something that I authorize. And you said that we did some. Uh, I'm sure we went out there when we, they put that metal building up because they needed the, that the concrete apron around the building. Yeah. The building, and that's, I think it was even something to do with the driveway. There was nothing disclosed. It was sold to us as it is able to have. I'm not saying there's no that's, 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 that's not my thing here. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. Yeah, but it's just never wet and stuff. stated to us, nor right. was And if we got something. That's not our. Right. Yeah, that's but do you have those records? Because we. 
We, we obviously we need to see them. Do too. I personally have them? No, no does the conservation commission have them? I don't know. We'd have to look. We'd have to look. Yeah. And uh, like I say, it looks like we're set up for the seventh. Yeah. For it to continue. Right. Yeah. And you know, we got to talk about these plans because, like I say, when we were saying, I, I reviewed these before I went out there. Yeah. And that's why I was confused about this pavement. Well, well, that's why I mean, you can see it. They're right on here. Yeah. yeah. You it's, know, and that would have like that right. makes a whole different ball yeah, yeah. game too. And yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I have no intention of having any asphalt out there. It makes no sense. But there was. Well, I didn't think so, but <laughs> I don't know what's going on because yeah. one says this and one says that. Right. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. Are they coming back in? I don't know, but they were. Let me go find out. Yeah. And you haven't heard anything from National Heritage? You said nothing. No. Because DEP, I guess, is notified now. Correct, but there's no action being taken on their part. As of yet. That's what they stated outright on the phone in the con conversation that we had. I think we can. Yes. I think we'll just continue to the seventh. Okay, so on your guys, then you'll we'll provide us with we'll look possible we'll records. Uh, do you have time to request those? We won't provide them. Who would I be asking? Because uh, Priscilla. Priscilla, okay. All right. Because as far as I know, those questions have been asked and nothing has been provided. And they said they had nothing of concern on that property. That's why we purchased the property, because it was set up for our usage. So, that we had some final plans for some more solidified? Well, the thing, the thing was is when. Uh, it was brought up the concern about the existing drain. What do we need to do if we need to do something with it? And that's what I had Bill Saruta. Did they leave? I don't know where they are. I don't see that's why I had Bill Saruta's son come up with plan A, plan B, if this has to be touched. That was where it comes to you guys. Does it need to be touched? Does it not need to be touched? If it is, then we'll upgrade this. Oh, we're not. We can't that's tell you whether. That's, that's nothing for us. Well, that's what it, we were told it was. No, that's that's for your that's for your engineer to decide whether you can According you know, to the bills of water don't need to. But the only reason those were created is because of the town board meetings with the various groups. They're the ones who brought up the concern. So that's why we provided it. According to Bill Saruta, we don't need to do anything to the drain. It complies with what he knows of. Down the road, if there's an issue, then you would have to come before us again. Sure. To, right. To do that. Right. If you right. do something but like that's the only reason why it's not in the plan because that is something that we had no intention of understanding not. But when you have another board member from one of the other boards say, hey, you may have to do something with that. Okay, well, here's plan A, plan B. That was provided for the planning board at the last meeting. I think I would probably fall more on your engineer to, yeah. to sort out the, then, then whatever then calculations. The board, yeah. It sounds like then we'll be sticking with what you have in front of you at that point according to the conversations I've had. We just want to give you guys options if that was the case. We don't work with options. When you make a request, we need to have hard plans. What you're going to do? Well, I already determined on that. Not then that's what's, that's what's in front of you now. Then. <clears throat> okay, I think you know. I think we need to continue. Just to continue it till the to the seventh. Sure. And up the look, or I'll I'll go see if we can you find can something. Us. On that, I just said talk to the Priscilla to see if they can locate any. Yeah. Well, that's what these guys are going to do too. Yeah, because obviously, the, I was, you know, it was obviously that the wetlands regulations were certainly in place when that was done, so I was interested to. But there's nothing in, you know, there's no registry of deeds records. There's no, that we have all the plans that the, and the, actually the copies of the protest and stuff from the, when the building was constructed, and I thought there might be kind of, um, materials in with. And there's nothing in here to indicate that anybody reviewed it. You're I, talking I, just it, the pad, right? Yeah, we went and looked at the building in the pad. I know. Yeah. yeah. So somewhere out there, that, and it wasn't that long ago. So hopefully the records are still. Like I said, this has already been brought up by myself to Priscilla and Dick, and they responded that there was nothing. Well, okay. Uh, we so don't the records. Lost at this We're yet. volunteers. Yeah. I get that. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll double check though, because obviously that would be. So we'll, so you guys will check. We'll check that. I'll double check with yeah. her. Any other? She's going to be out for a couple of days, so okay. it won't be till uh, in the middle. We got a little time. Middle of next week, and then it'll 
going to be the following week after. Right. Mm -hmm. Just continue to the seventh. Any other Six questions outside of the drain? Uh, the only thing this doesn't have is uh, I know one of these do, I think, or it talks about it. Okay. Is uh, system is the uh, erosion control. We didn't think we had to do anything about that. Because well, you got stuff know. over the bank like we were talking, and it's National Heritage. Right. Well, so well, well, my understanding from our conversation, we had a conference call with DEP on the day of the tree cutting. Yeah. Um, and what we were told by DEP was we should file a request for determination. If you determine that we need to file a notice of intent, then we notify National Heritage. If we don't need to file a notice of intent, we don't need to notify National Heritage. So if you determine that the act okay. is applicable, we don't need to do an NOI, then we don't need to notify them. Um, so that's the, the procedure that I'm, that I'm going on. And of course, the tree cutters were told to stop doing their cleanup too, so they... So they you're not adding any ways. gravel or anything around the building? I have no intent. Right now we have the wood chips. He says, if you ever want more wood chips, just ask. He'll bring a load. <laughs> but that's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So all your gravel is Because the front. minute you, you, you change anything. Sure. Yeah, no, there's not. You know, the gravel there. truck comes in and no, now, now you're filling it and now you're changing We're only it. using it for storage other than employee parking where it's determined on the north side of the building where the dumpster's proposed. Like I said, we have to put a concrete pad over there. There is some soft soil there, so that would be the only sign that may potential have to have some gravel put down. Other Under, underneath the concrete pad. Underneath, yeah. And yeah, no, that, that's so they can get in with their truck. It's all around the building. No, it's all going to be around the building. The most you'll ever have is the chips. Yeah. Chips are strong enough for us to drive over and to have the four trailers that are stored there. I think we we should look into that first and see if you say we were up there or you were up there. Yeah. I'm there a lot, so just pop in. So we uh, we'll check with Priscilla also, or sure. see if we can look in and uh, just continue this to uh, the seventh. The seventh. Okay. Very good. And then we'll uh, we'll just make note that we received a revised plan, let's say. Yes. For right now, to right to now be re to be reviewed. Uh, Sure. A little more. Yep. Now the tree cutting guy, even though we've already cut whatever's going to be touched there, he's going to want permission to finish the work that's out front, which has nothing to do with the wetlands area. So we agreed to stop everything, but can we at least clean up the front there? We're not worried about what's around the back of the building or anything at this point in time, as you saw. But we've got logs stuck out front. I'm having two, three people a day stop me trying to get the wood off of me. <laughs> So, so what are you asking? Then? Well, I mean, we agreed to not do any further work. Until right, you can't do anything. So what I need to do is, like, like I pointed out, a cluster of trees up front that has nothing to do with the wetlands. Other than we have the work that he needs to do. It needs to be finished. Way outside the hundred foot buffer zone. Yeah. So he just, really just doesn't want to touch anything because of yeah, yeah. past drama. We want to move the logs so they're over off to the side so they're not. Yeah. Well, I, I see no problem with the logs and. Uh, you're talking about the trees right next to five and ten. Yes. Just yeah. So cleaning up. You, we remember the state tree that we're talking about yeah. to the right. There's that small cluster on the corner of the property over here that needs to go for. So that way I can pay the guy because he can't get paid till his job's completed. And we can pick up the sticks that he's left out in the debris area so we can cut grass. So before yeah, it gets out. Just, of just don't touch anything in the. Yeah, we're near, near on the side of the building, in the, back the rear in the side. side yeah, yeah we, there's yeah. nothing to touch there at this point until we. No, there's all kind stuff over the bank. You said he's he's got to remove. Yeah. Well, I mean, can you do that? That's, that was my. Well, that's the thing. You know, if you want me to have him, go ahead and remove the. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah, have him finish mean, what he needs to do. No, you can't touch it. Okay. You can't touch it. Yeah. All right, so we'll just let it be. Yeah, you better. So I'll just have him finish what he needs up front. It's already been disturbed. You don't want to redisturb it. It's been disturbed. Yeah. Right, and that's another issue that we might have to get. Right. Find out, you know, just leave it alone, or uh, you have to remove it. And, right. Well, right. Like, and do yeah. something else. Then. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so the front, I'll just have him. So we'll just continue this, and uh, okay. Okay. we'll talk about that more. But you know, okay. you can remove those few blocks that are in the front there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, uh, cluster. Yeah. Yeah, because he's going to grind that big yeah, tree that was in front. front by five and ten. I don't see no issue right along that edge of road there. I don't know. 
Well, once they're outside the buffer. The whole lot yeah. Stoppage or everything. No, it was just this whole. This we originally agreed to stop everything until we had this meeting. At that, and that's why we just want to make sure we're not stepping on toes here. Well, once they're outside the buffer, it ain't nothing to do with right. this. But it's still agreed. Yeah. yeah. Still yeah. Stop it, so. yeah. Okay. so I'll finish up what he needs. Okay. Very good. You think, or should we just. No, it's fine. I wasn't there. So yeah. No, there were some logs right in here. That, you know, the trees, the trunks. And then. Right. Oh, you can't say touch 90. You can't no say either day, right. but I would say use your best judgment. Yeah, it's not within any of the buffers to be concerned of, really. But no, they don't drift anywhere else. If they stay right no, they're not. They're not cutting anything within that buffer. So it's just that one cluster. Next A lot of people road. go by. It'll be easy to tell. Yeah. Yeah, there's some people that drove by today. With camera going they're part of the committees here so um yeah there's a large tree out we're just going to grind that down but again it's all outside that buffer so very good okay so i say we uh, vote to continue to the seven. Second. Aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Ten of you are a little worried about not having corn tonight. Uh, let's just to talk about it a little bit here. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. And we have a letter from uh, let's see, Berkshire Design Group saying that the project is complete and everything was uh, built as per plans. Move that we uh, sign the cert of compliance. Installing uh, lightning arresters, I guess. Is that what they are? And they're just up there on the top of uh, Old Albany Road, I guess. And pretty much that's the whole area, I guess they're doing. And it sounds like they just, you know, try to get in there and then the guys are going to climb it. Mm -hmm. system over there on Waitley Road by the UPS out that way mm -hmm. and right on the corner there mm -hmm. the Beavers and Bloody Brook I guess it, it was backing up and everything so Steve, okay. Steve signed it and I went by there and they're right at it working and they got the silk fence and everything so everything looks fine so I think I'm not sure. I think he just, I think as long as he signed it, I don't think we have to. Because there's an emergency sign. Just that we have to be aware of it. Oh. Yeah. All right. And let's 
see. Minutes of mail. Minutes. I didn't see any mail, so. Accept them. Second. Aye. Aye. Next meeting, other than our the special one there, our special one would be uh, August 24th. Okay. Sounds good. And like I say, on this, this other one here, we get a, I guess I'll have to bring that in tomorrow, have it posted. But that's what she had set up for, you know, and because of that meeting prior or after, they want, you know, with this uh, storage. Because I think they want it because of the review was being done for both of us. Oh, like Sarah Campbell there. Oh. So I think that's, that's my understanding, and like I say, we, uh, that might change, but I think that's uh, that's everything. It's, we can adjourn. Eight forty-four. All second. Aye.